All right, thanks for coming today. We're talking about undergraduate research, the opportunities on campus. I'm Mary Farwell. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Research, and I'm in the Research Division, Research Economic Development and Engagement. So um, the title of this is, what is an IRCA? But I'm going to try to cover all the different opportunities that we have in our office. And the IRCA is really sort of the major um, funding source that um, we give money out to students for doing research and creative activity. So IRCA actually stands for Research, uh, Undergraduate Research and Creativity, Creative Activity Award. So IRCA Awards. And um, the IRCA Awards are a competition. There's um, two deadlines a year. And any area of research can be supported by the IRCA Awards. We have um, categories depending on fields. It's not particular disciplines, but it's kind of groups of disciplines. And the four categories we have are natural science, including mathematics and engineering. So we call that STEM. Biomedical science, humanities and arts, and social science. So those are the broad categories. So an example is if you're doing research at the medical school in someone's lab who is working on um, microbiology, that would be considered biomedical science. Um, if you're working on um, an engineering project to design um, a process, that would be engineering or STEM, STEM or natural science. So if you have a doubt about the, the, the actual category, just ask your mentor or ask uh, me. I can give you that answer. Sometimes I move things around. The ERCA words are applied to um, through um, a website, and that is um, two deadlines a year, the last Friday in September and the last Friday in January. That gives you time to develop a project if you are just starting on a project in the fall, but if students have done some work in the summer like you have, then they might be able to apply in the September deadline. So it gives you chances depending on your stage of the project. What we really expect from the IRCA program, though, is that students have already established a relationship with a mentor. So these are mentored projects, and you have to have that relationship because we're going to be asking you pretty high-level questions about your project. You're going to need to have very clear ideas, um, very clear outcomes that you're going to um, be able to articulate in the application. You're going to have to have a mentor already, as I say, the mentor must be already recognized and already um, associated with that project. So that ends up being a, as I say, competitive. What we found during over the years is that, in general, about 50% of the applications are funded. So that means if I get 100 applications every year, I probably can fund about 50 IRCA awards. Usually the breakdown is I get about two-thirds of them funded in the fall, one-third of them funded in the spring. And that has to do with just the natural numbers that come in fall and spring. I, don't, I try to be fair and to give the you know, the same scrutiny fall and spring. So if someone asks me, is it, is it better to apply in the fall and the spring? And my answer would be, whenever you're ready, you should apply. One of the reasons that we have two deadlines, though, is that that allows students to be able to apply twice in that one calendar, one academic year. And so that sometimes will allow the student to edit their project to get it up to the level where it would be. So those are things we look at. We look at to see whether or not the student had applied before, and that gives them a little bit extra points on points, if you will, or consideration. Those IRCA awards are reviewed through a faculty committee. And I said, because the categories are so broad, my faculty that work on that committee are very interdisciplinary, and they really have that 
experience and interest in funding and looking at research in all different areas of the university. So if you're a faculty member, if you're interested in serving, let me know and we can, we can help you with that. So the amounts that are available for the ERCA awards, it's up to $2,000 unless you are an honor student because we work with the Honors College and you can ask for up to $2,500 if you're an honor student because the Honors College will supplement those awards for honor students. So the budget should reflect the actual costs of doing the project. There are two parts of the application. The project description itself and the budget justification. The budget, budget justification will, again, reflect the actual cost of the project. The best budgets are very detailed and they tell exactly what the student will spend in order to get the project done. We try not to fund general lab supplies that everyone can use. We try to fund, for example, supplies that are specific for your project. We really do like to give money to students. So in fact, even the um, reviewers will cr criticize sometimes the budget saying they're only asking for supplies, they're not asking for the student money or the stipend. So think about whether you're spending time on the project. If you're spending time, your time is valuable. Therefore, we want you to request a stipend. And there's going to be details in the application instructions that talks about the amount of stipend. And so I won't get into those details right now. So I won't make sure I get, get the details right. I won't say them. <laughs> so the IRCAs are, again, sort of our premier um, mechanism for giving money to students. 